traditional media, the top tier meta strategy is to have the reader regularly face new and unique situations. If you read a story where this same thing happens to the same characters day after day after day after day without any new insight, it'll get pretty boring pretty fast. But now with visual novels, baby! And for many visual novels, especially those in the dating sim genre, wrapping their narratives around a day-night system is an easy way to sprinkle a handful of unique situations and scenarios across a potentially infinite story. At its root is this simple loop, using the statement, while true, will make anything underneath repeat in an infinite loop. In this case, it's day, it's night, then we hide the images for the next day and we loop it again. Now we're gonna add a lot of complexity to this loop over time, but at its core, at this point, we're really just trying to define the steps along this narrative circle. So now let's fill that circle in. I'll start with some choices. During the day, the reader can go to the zoo, eat at a food truck, or walk in the park. While at night, the reader can have some drinks at the bar, read a book, or go to bed early. If you're making your visual novel out of a series of these loops, like let's say your characters are moving from location to location, and in each new town they rest in, you wanna give the reader some options for how they spend their nights between the big story beats. This might be all you need, but if a big chunk of your story is gonna be set in this big central loop, you'll want some more complexity. And weirdly enough, we're gonna start with that complexity by simplifying some things a little bit. Going to bed early gave you a little extra energy the next day. We could let the reader loop through the day portion twice maybe, but I'd like to add another segment of time to the day while keeping that central loop really clean looking. So I'll set up a variable for the reader's energy and have it be two by default. If the energy is two, we're gonna call the label day, which has everything we had in our last build, except this time we'll be reducing the energy by one when we go to that section. If the energy is one, we'll call the label night, but this time when they select go to bed early, we'll set a variable called extra rest to true. Then when the user has zero energy, they'll display the next day, and set their energy to the next day for two, or if they select to go to bed early and extra rest was set to true, we'll give the user three energy for the next day. With three energy, we'll call a new time of day, morning. I'm using a tint matrix to give the park day an orangey morning tint. This saves us the trouble of having to make a new background. Breaking the different times of day into labels will let us get each of those segments as complicated as we need later on without the base loop getting too bloated. You can segment the day into as many parts as you need. You could give the reader, I don't know, 16 awake hours, let's say, and assign different actions and amount of time it takes to complete them. And all you'd need to do is adjust the segments accordingly. Maybe under 12 hours it's day and over it's night, and this system still works. Different games and different stories are gonna have different needs, and the intention of this video isn't to give you just one solution. Ideally, you'll see these basic ideas and tools, and you're gonna learn how to build on them to suit your own needs. Now that we have a really good day-to-day -day loop, let's expand that out to a whole year. First, I'll create a few variables. Total days will be the total number of days that occur in the game, and we'll need that to know when certain holidays are. So in this case, the first big holiday we're worried about is 61 days from the start of the school year, Halloween. So when total days are equal to one or 61, we'll call from our holidays list, which we'll add to over time. Then we have day of the week and day of the week number. This will determine if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. And at the end of every day, we'll call a day change label and we'll add one to this number. And when it equals eight, we'll set it back down to one. Then, depending on what that number is, we'll name day of the week the corresponding day of the week. Now that we have different days of the week, let's say our main character's in school. First, we'll remove that reference about going to a bar, and then we'll adjust our main loop so when energy is two and the day of the week is five or lower, we'll call school day. When it's not a school day, we'll call from our regular day list, but on one of those days when your energy is two and the day of the week is five or lower, the character's gonna be in school. Finally, we'll deal with months. We'll add variables month, day, and month, and at the end of every day, we'll call the function month change. This is where I'm moving the variable total days, which we'll add one to at the end of every day, and we'll also add one to month day. Since our game starts in September, which has 30 days in it, if total days is equal to 31, we'll know it's now October 1st. 
So we'll reset month day to one and change the month to October. At day 62, we'll know it's November 1st, so we'll reset month day to one and change the name from October to November and so on and so forth until day 366, where we'll know it's been a full year. So it's technically now September 1st again. We're going to ignore leap years. Since we're not worried about years, at total days 366, we'll just set the total days back to one. Now, there are easier ways to do all of this, but easier isn't always clear. And as we add more and more complexity to the system, we're going to get errors. So I found writing stuff plainly like this helps us spot a lot of those errors earlier. Later on, you can create arrays to display this or find ways to manipulate a single variable so it can be used for multiple purposes. But for now, whenever you're unsure of where an error can come from, this makes it easy to spot the area that needs to be corrected. To help us with that, we'll also create a display for these variables. So we'll create a screen called day display, and every day on the right, we'll display the day of the week and the month and the day of the month. And on the left side, we'll include information that isn't revealed to the player, but we'll need for debugging, energy, total days, and whether or not extra rest is activated. Now we've created a really long loop that potentially goes on forever, but every day is kind of the same. So for the next stage, we're going to focus on giving a little bit more variety to the reader's decisions so their day-to-day -day is not so monotonous. So for this next level of complexity, we're really going to focus on expanding the locations the reader can travel to from day to day. Every time they wake up, we'll still want them to start in their room, so we'll replace the black screen with home sleep. In the morning, though, we'll show them different options of stuff to do based on which location they're at, using the variable location. The main day loop will start by default at home, so from home, you can choose to sleep in or have breakfast, or you can walk to the park or walk to the city. Choosing one of those last two statements will move you from location to location, where there's a different set of menu options. At each of these locations, we're showing a different background image that changes based on what time of day it is, like our initial park set. For a little extra variety, I'll also include a few details that change depending on when the user visits them. We can have a TV show that changes whenever the user goes home. This will be randomized from this list whenever the user enters the home. We'll also change the museum the reader can go to depending on what week it is. The first week of the month, it's the aquarium. The second week, the history museum then the art gallery, and then the aviary. Again, there are easier ways to set this up, but for now, we're keeping it simple. Now that we have a lot more options for the player to take from day to day, and in a format where it's easy for us to add new options over time, we'll focus on reasons for readers to pick one option over another. Stories go forward as information compounds over time. So now let's give the readers some concrete proof that the actions they're doing right now are actually adding up to something. So let's add some stats. Hearts, smarts, and muscles. And these variables will go up depending on what actions the reader takes. So let's say during school, if the reader focuses on learning, they'll get plus one to smarts. Or if they focus on fitness, they'll get a plus one to muscles. Or if you press the like and subscribe buttons below, you'll get a plus one to game design. So let's say we want the reader to get up to 25 points in one of these stats before we open up a new story branch to them. We'll set up a new variable, stat lock, that will tell us which stat is the first one they set to 25. We'll add a call function for stat underscore lock test, which checks if stat lock is still set for false, and if one of the three stats is 25 or over. Once they do, we'll give the reader an indication of which stat they leveled up with some text and change stat lock to that stat. Once they have a set stat, We'll add some options to the menu for school days using an if statement inside this menu option so we'll only show it when that stat is leveled up. When the reader picks one of these options, they'll add to a counter that unlocks different story events for their specific stat. While we're at it, let's add some more universal story events that happen on some more days. We're keeping this separate from the holidays label, mostly just for our own records. Now, this is the part where we're really relying on the writer and the programmer to work together to properly reward the reader. Within this day-night game loop that's happening over time, we want to make sure that the reader is regularly getting new and novel experiences, like regularly paced along this entire continuum to keep the readers engaged over time. This can take the form of restricting movement or activities until later on in the game. Maybe they can't visit the city for the first month or 
Three months later, a new arcade opens up, or they'll get access to a private gym if their muscle stat hits 40, even if it's not their primary stat. As we keep going and adding more complexity from this point, we can add things fairly modularly. If we want to add a new location, we'll just copy each section from the morning and replace the values with that new location, as well as new walking instructions for each section. If we want a new stat or two, we can add it in along the same fashion. We can even add a new time of day. But at some point, if you're making enough specific changes to fit your specific needs and circumstances, you're gonna be making something entirely new. So I use a version of this day-night cycle in kind of an early part of my current visual novel I'm working on. But in a later part, I'm making a pretty different variation. Now keep in mind, this is all temp art, so a little ugly, but the bones are there. Instead of day and night, I have my days split into 40 segments, representing a chunk of time spent digging. With every click, a counter goes up. As the timer goes from zero to 25, I move the sun at an angle up and across the sky, and then from 25 to 40, it goes down at an angle. I'm also changing the color of every layer of the environment as the timer goes up in the last 15 clicks or so. As the user digs over time, the hole gets deeper and deeper and deeper. Every night, there's various story events that will happen, and as different thresholds are hit, different special story events will activate that can give the character new options they can pick during the day. Better digging levels, new digging techniques, equipment unlocks, etc. I've spent some time pacing this out, so as the user plays, they're getting a unique story segment every few minutes or so. But most of the time, they're essentially playing this little clicker game. But at the base is still that simple game loop using Wild True. So now it's worth thinking about what your game loop would be and how your specific needs would require this code to change to fit it. Maybe your characters spend your whole visual novel walking around so your loop is based on where along a winding path they're currently at. Or there could be several different storylines your character progresses along based on the moral alignment of their last character choice. Or maybe you have story loops within larger story loops within even larger story loops. But I bet you have some better ideas than I do. Give me your best visual novel game loop ideas below. And in the meantime, I got another video that'll really help your visual novel pop.